We're going to continue forward with finishing the toolpaths for this part and sending it to the post processor to make sure that it produces the correct G code for our part. We've already created a facing operation to clear away some of the material from the stock. Now we're going to work on the specific uh, geometries of this particular part. The first two operations that we'll look at are a pocket or a clearing and then this outside to create a boss right here. So let's start with doing this pocket cut here. We'll go to our 2D milling operations tab and we'll select 2D pocket. We're gonna be using the same tool as the previous video. So if you haven't watched setting up that tool, make sure you figure out how to load the quarter inch tool using that white side library or whatever tool that you're using. We're going to move to the next tab. The geometry we're going to select is going to be the bottom edge inside of this pocket. So make sure that you select that bottom edge so that it produces the correct tool path for you. If you don't like what it's selected or you selected the wrong thing, you can right click and clear selections. In this case, it provides an arrow, which is the direction of cutting. And we'll, we'll see that in a second when we want to cut inside or outside of the cut. But let's follow along with some of the standard things that HSM is producing and then we'll go back and tweak things. Look at our Heights tab. We rotate our model. It's a little easier to see the layers. We'll start at the bottom and we want to make sure that we have from contour, from selection, that's going to come to the bottom of this pocket. For this part, that's totally fine. We've already cut away much of the stock, so the top should actually be the model top. And that should adjust now to the last operation. And then the rest of these should also fit. I like to just put feed height here to make sure that they all align. In the next tab for the 2D pocket, the first thing that we want to look at is the passes. 0.2375 is about 90% of a step over. Since we're adding a small pocket here with a quarter inch end mill, the passes don't totally matter, but I like to bring this down just a little bit. I think 0.2 is good. Another thing that we can do is to clean up the edges of here is to add a finishing pass. And we can just have it roll down another 25 thousandths around the edge to clean up anything uh, that was left over and to give us a uniform pocket. I'm going to uncheck stock to leave for now. If we were cutting in a harder material like metal, we would want to leave a little stock and then come through and do our finishing passes. We'll add a lead on the finishing pass to overlap where the tool comes in and out to try to reduce the witness marks, and I'll make that the length of the tool. I'm going to move to the next tab. I'm going to keep most of these the same for now. If your lead in and lead out is too high, it will actually come into the side of your part. So just make sure that you don't select a quarter inch lead out and it will crash into your part. We can helix into the part as well and we'll hit 2D pocket. We can look at our tool path and it looks like it's going to helix all the way down and then cut through. This particular pocket is about an eighth of an inch, so it would be okay to do in one pass like this. But if we don't like that and we wanna preserve our tools and we have the time, underneath the 2D pocket tab, we can always add uh, some depths. We can click multiple depths. But then we can say how many, how deep each cut is, and then how many passes we'd like to do. So if we'd like to do this in two finishing step downs at the bottom, then we clean off the bottom nice and close. But let's say we wanna do 0.05. We'll check and that produces a lot of step downs.
we'll make it a little larger so that we get two major two or three major step downs and that should take out this part pretty quickly clean it up and not be aggressive on the bit we'll move to our next operation which is cleaning up this outside uh, we're going to use a 2d adaptive clearing just to show off the tool path we want to make sure we double check the direction of this and the tool. When I select my model, I want to select the correct edges or the face. So if I select this face, it should allow me to cut just those areas within this face. Right now I have stock contours not selected, so it's going to take into account the entire stock model. I'll look at my bottom height. From the contour again, and I'll work my way up. Again, I cut away the stock, so I want to go to model top, and this will also be model top, so I'm not dropping so far into the part. The next height, uh, the next tab rather, is going to be our clearing operations. This optimal load is the amount that the tool is engaged in our part. Having a quarter inch tool, 0.1 is totally acceptable. We wanna be less than half the diameter of the tool for sure. We'll make sure it's a climb cut. And for now, we're gonna uncheck stock to leave and we're just gonna cut this part out. In the next tab, we can play with our stay down level. This changes the algorithm for how fast it's going to complete the part. If we're staying down all the way, ideally there's only one or two lifting operations, but it takes longer to produce that. Just because I'm making a video, I'm gonna stick somewhere in the middle. And the rest should be just fine for now. Let's see what it produces. So we can see we're going to helix down in this corner and then slowly cut away a lot of this material. That'll leave a rough edge around here for our contour, which is not a huge deal, but if we wanted to take away some of that material to begin with, we could always add a sketch outside of this part and then add in uh, the inside of this boss. So to do that, we would go back to our feature manager, take a sketch, draw a sketch, I'm gonna draw it on the face, and then I'm just gonna offset this entity, the width of the bit, which is 0.25, and that makes a sketch complete around this part. I'll hit okay, I'll finish this sketch, and then when I go back to my HSM tab, I have this sketch here that I can now select, so I'll edit, I'll go to my Models tab, and I'm going to clear this selection. I'm going to select this, 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 and this. I'm making sure I get all those edges. And we'll check our directions in a second. Now when I check that, it should go a little bit outside of the part and you can see it does so we just have to add that boundary in if you don't like seeing the extra sketch you can always hide that as well i'm going to leave it up just for the purpose of this video our last step is to cut the contour and since we've cut outside here it should alleviate a lot of that full engagement on the tool so we'll go to 2D milling, 2D contour. Again, we're using the same bit just for simplicity. For our model edge, we want to select the edges of the part here. If you select one edge, notice the direction. You can also select all the edges just to make sure you get the full contour. And we'll check that in a minute. For the heights, our bottom is definitely the contour. For the top, since we've cut away a lot of this part, 
we're going to say from selection and we're just going to select either this face or one of those edges and then from here we'll adjust to the top the retract height could be model top to be safe and then our 2d contour we're going to focus on uh, how deep we're going so first off let's check multiple depths and for our multiple depths we'll do about 0.1 less than half the bit is okay for especially with wood uh, I'm going to check use even step downs and that should split everything we can set a finishing pass around the edge just to do you know, one cleanup real quick so we'll click multiple finishing passes we'll do one and it's asking how much we'll take off on that last pass uh, we'll also make sure that we use the leads and then uh, uncheck the leads rather so that we're not coming in and out of that part okay everything else should stay unchecked for now we'll move over to our linking tab and we'll keep the tool down two inches is fine our lead in and lead out is going to get uh, unchecked and then we're going to check ramp and we're going to let it ramp into the part about an inch deep so it'll do a long slow ramp and then it will engage let's see how it looks So if you can't see the toolpath, it means that it's probably on the wrong side. So let's edit the toolpath. And when you go over to the model selection, see your arrow, you probably need to switch the arrow. And if you accidentally select the face, you can always delete that face. You can check reverse as well. And now it should make an appropriate toolpath around the part. Right now it's coming straight down in and it's ramping for about an inch. And each one of these is a separate ramp for the part. So it looks like it's continuous and then we've broken it down into a couple passes. That's a totally acceptable part if we're cutting out of wood on the router table and that would produce uh, a fine result. At the end it'll make one full pass around the part to clean it up. The uh, last step in preparing our model is to create a uh, post process so that the machine can read all of the tool paths that we uh, entered. So let's click post process and we get this uh, dialog box that pops up and we want to make sure that we're looking for the right uh, post processor for our machine. Mine's already listed but just to show you just by searching HSM posts or going to Autodesk HSM posts. And then you can search for the post processor that you're looking for. We're looking for CNC router parts and you can download that. And that should download as a .cps file. That .cps file should get saved to your computer in a location that you know. And then when you go into HSM works and you hit post process, it's looking for a configuration folder. Since I just downloaded it, I'm just searching for that download folder. It should then pop up in this list here. I'll select the correct post processor. I already have a program name from when I did my job setup and that's getting transferred here. Double check the extension. It should say .nc, .tap or um, .spp if you're using ShopBot. There's a couple different types of extensions. Uh, this machine takes a .tap file since it's a Mach 3 um, file. Right here we can change a few things about post-processor configurations um, and we can also add a comment into our total uh, program here that will sit at the top. You can check open and see in file editor and then you can see the G code that it produces right away. So let's post this pick a place where you want to store it and it should pop up the uh, automatic the HSM edit and you can open it in any text editor and you can check your G code to make sure it's doing exactly what you want.
Okay. If you notice, mine just posted the 2D contour. That's because the 2D contour was selected. If you want to post the whole job, click job, post process, double check all your settings, your post processor, and then wherever you want it to go, hit post. And then you can select a folder. And then let's see what it produces now. Now I have a much longer file. I've got ways to go and all of my jobs should be in here. You can also start searching for contour and that would bring up the contour. Okay, that's a rough introduction to setting up a simple part and a couple 2D operations in HSM works. That should get you started with playing around and making sure everything looks right. Once you have the process down, don't forget to simulate and simulate the whole job so you can see exactly what's going on. And it will just give you a good idea. There will also be some red flags down here at the bottom that should indicate whether or not there's an error. And the couple red lines that popped up are just letting me know that it could crash with the stock depending on the heights that I set. So if there's a clamp or a hold down, it would have a full engagement right there. Um, so it's a good warning. From here, don't forget to save your part and you should be good to go.